Hey guys, welcome back to the Dragon Guide. Welcome back to a brand new video. And this is part 3 of the Orange Island saga of what if Ash fully evolved all his Pokemon. And we are about to start with Ash vs Lorelei. But before that happens, I just wanted to state that guys, it's been great and it has made me feel super grateful that you guys have shown the support and love to the series that you have. I just want you guys to continue doing that, continue watching. I had just one additional request. I want you guys to like all videos and comment anything and literally anything and if you do that that would mean a lot and it would help the channel a lot so just like and comment on all videos that you can with that let's start with the story Ash vs Lorelai starts as Ash sends out his strongest choice in Charizard, preferring a stronger, aggressive attacker as Lorelai sends out Jinx and both Pokemon launch Dragon Claw and Ice Punch respectively, clashing in the middle of the ground. This makes Snow Crystal scatter in the surroundings and Lorelai is impressed with Charizard's strength and then calls for a blizzard which lands well and ends up freezing Charizard's wings. This irritates Ash as it restricts Charizard's movement and reduces his agility. Now, Ash asks for Charizard to use the flamethrower and heat up the surroundings by using that flame especially on the ground. Lorelai views this and realizes Ash's strategy and calls for a shadow wall as Ash asks Charizard to counter the shadow wall with the dragon claw as the heated surroundings eventually start getting to Jinx as Lorelai is forced to use Blizzard to cool down the ground as this is when Ash does something reckless calling Charizard to crash into Jinx behind a whale of a flamethrower which eventually frees up his wings and catches Jinx off guard who is occupied with cooling the ground with the blizzard. Lorelai praises Ash but then tells him that she will finish it in the next 3 or 4 moves as this makes Ash call her out for taking him too lightly. Then with the ground all cooled down and both Pokemon having taken some damage, Ash calls for a seismic toss as Lorelai calls for a psychic which stops Charizard midway as Lorelai then asks Jinx to then lift Charizard high in the air and crash him into the ground as strong as he can as Ash is left with nothing to do because Charizard is just caught by the strong psychic. Ash, after Charizard manages to get up, calls for an air slash as Lorelai calls for a shadow ball, which all clash, leading to a dust cloud. Ash tries to utilize this to his advantage with a seismic toss which works, but on the way down, Lorelai asks Jinx to land multiple ice punches on Charizard's wings, damaging them heavily as Charizard crashes into the ground with Jinx due to the damage on the wings. Ash grunts and calls for Charizard to charge at Jinx with the fury of Dragon Claws as Lorelai calls for Jinx to dodge each attack and counter it with Ice Punch as the two Pokemon start battling out like a street brawl as Lorelai in the middle of that calls for a Shadow Ball on the ground, disbalancing Charizard as Jinx then follows that up by taking a strong Dragon Claw to the face but resisting it and landing an Ice Punch uppercut ending the battle as Ash's eyes are opened up to the fact that he has still a long way to go. Ash then helps Charizard get up and Lorelai walks up to the two of them stating that you might have defeated Bruno at your current level but for you to even think that you have a chance of defeating the Elite Four is still a dream as she reveals that she is the Elite Four member stronger than Bruno and that there are other two members stronger than her which Ash will have to beat to become a regional champion. Ash unlike older times looks at Charizard and both have a fire in their eyes as they tell her that they will definitely catch up and meet her again as a regional champion someday. Lorelai is impressed and tells Ash that he is a good trainer and has a really strong Pokemon but, but that he won't be able to completely be a great trainer if he cannot have his Pokemon improve. She states that if he just develops their strengths and not their weaknesses, how is he different than other trainers and also advises him that having an adaptive offensive strategies for every situation in the battle is great but you need to have adaptive defensive strategies in case of setback which is harmful for you in a battle. This is what separates a good trainer from a great trainer in battle. Ash is very inspired hearing these words. Then Misty and Tracy also come up and hear these wise words as Lorelai then tells Misty that she would like to 
see her battle and get stronger and meet her in battle someday in an ice versus water type matchup. Misty is flabbergasted here in this. Then, this is when Lorelai tells them that they have a long way to go, but they are still young and they can achieve a lot more. Both Ash and Misty from this discussion are exceptionally hyped up and you know excited to get better. Then Lorelai sees off her heroes on a ferry heading to Trovita Island with the next gym is owned by a woman called Marin. As Ash decides with Pikachu and Charizard that they will not just get stronger but become the best they can be. Our heroes on their way to Trovita Island stop at Shamauti Island as the weather has started to go wrong at all places, not just the Orange Islands. As they learn from Professor Oak on a call that the same is happening at Pallet Town too. Ash, sensing that things could get tricky soon, switches his team for his strongest team of Pikachu, Charizard, Blastoise, Venusaur, Aerodactyl, and Alakazam. As Oak actually does recommend Ash the same and supports his decision. Our heroes then learn that the Islanders are celebrating their annual Legends Festival, which prophesizes that the Chosen One will help Lugia save the world. Now, to a surprising shift in tone, Ash is introduced to be a Pokemon trainer to the Islanders and he is cited by them as the Chosen One, so much so that the festival maiden, Melody, kisses Ash, which angers Misty. Later, when Melody explains Ash's role as the Chosen One and explains that he must travel to all the islands of the legendary birds and collect three glass orbs representing flame, ice and lightning and bring them back to the shrine. Ash is very interested in this because this will give him a chance to see the three legendary birds or even Articuno again which is a reason enough for him to do this as Misty and Tracy, though reluctant, stay behind as Marin starts off a boat and Ash and her set to the sea to go to the flame island. This is when in the background we see a rich Pokemon collector called Lawrence capture Moltres with his ice cannons and we see that the weather is consequently getting worse so much so that Ash's boat crashes on the fire island as Pikachu sensing the situation to get worse leads Ash to the fire rope as Marin waits at the shore with the boat. This is when Lawrence's aircraft detects Zapdos arriving at the fire island soon as Lawrence gets excited for his second capture. This is when somehow Ash and Pikachu find the fire orb and on their way back to the boat run into Team Rocket as Misty, Melody, Tracy also arrive on the island. But who also arrives is Zapdos who on Meowth's translation of his roars, we learn that he is here to claim the island for himself. But eventually is drained of all his powers by Lawrence's airship and is captured. This is when not just Zapdos is captured but everyone including Ash, Team Rocket, uh, Marin and Melody and everyone, they all get captured by Lawrence's ship too and they learn about his plan to capture all the legendary birds but they're eventually released by him because he does not want to do anything to them then once our heroes are released lawrence actually leaves because he learns of articuno's location who has used ice beam to freeze the entire island and its surroundings Ashen Gang then once free along with Team Rocket notice that Lawrence's ship has all has the two legendary birds captured and as Lawrence is busy engaging Articuno, Team Rocket and Ash with all their Pokemon are somehow successful in freeing the legendary birds Moltres and Zapdos crashing Lawrence's ship on the Lightning Island. The three legendary birds though then start fighting with each other as Ash somehow manages to obtain the Lightning Orb 2 as Ash then with Marin, Team Rocket and everyone get back to the Shaumati Island shrine on Melody's boat. Then they meet Sloking, the guardian of the shrine who can speak and shows Ash where to place the orbs on sensing which the legendary birds start attacking the shrine only to be stopped by Lugia who appears and tries to calm the three birds but they gang up on it and attack it but the three birds are too much for Lugia to take and it crashes down to the sea. As this is when Melody plays her tune from the festival ceremony which somehow heals Lugia who through a psychic power tells Ash to obtain the ice orb from Articuno's island as everyone then motivates the doubtful Ash as he sets out with his Pokemon on the frozen ice with Lugia protecting him from the Three legendary birds. This is when we see Professor Oak, Delia, and the news people crash into the island with the helicopter. Team Rocket salvages the broken parts 
of the helicopter and build a motor boat to help Ash reach the island even faster and ask him and Pikachu to hop on as Ash calls for Charizard and Aerodactyl to take on Articuno in the sky. Alakazam with Blastoise helps to restrain Moltres, utilizing his psychic ability specially, and Venusaur to assist Lugia in countering Zapdos by slowing and distracting Zapdos with its attack somehow. Ash then with Team Rocket's help is able to obtain the Ice Orb and recalls all his Pokemon who have taken considerably high damage trying to help Lugia out, but they did well trying to hold off and distract the legendary birds. Team Rocket then asks Ash to go with Lugia alone as they stay behind to slow the legendary birds even further with their smoke tricks, which somewhat helps until just before Ash and Lugia are about to reach the shrine, Lawrence attacks Lugia with his ship. This is when Ash releases all his Pokemon and asks all of them to unleash a combined attack on Lawrence's ship and then the same combined attack assisting Lugia a strong attack on the three birds. As there is a loud crash and Ash and Lugia fall to the sea as Ash manages to just recall all his Pokemon. But we also see that the three birds crashing to the ground being somewhat weakened by the strong combined attacks of Lugia and all of Ash's Pokemon. This is when Misty comes in clutch, saving Ash, helping him get back to consciousness with Tracy's help as they make Ash reach the shrine as he places the final orb and revives Lugia as the tune of Melody songs plays loudly through the shrine's pillars as they glow. Lugia then with its new strength comes up and calms down all the three weakened bird Pokemon with ease. Lugia then departs with the three birds after thanking Ash and everyone for their help as the heroes then meet up with Ivy, Oak and Delia as the weather is restored to normality as Ash gives Professor Oak all his Pokemon except Pikachu and Charizard and asks him to return the original set of Nidoqueen, Scyther, Primeape, Tediosa once he gets back to Pallet Town. He also tells his mom that he will soon return home. The gang also meet Ivy and ask her about Brock and his well-being and then after Marin has repaired her ship, they leave for Trovita Island again. Ash on the boat thinks to himself he is still far from the strength that he needs to reach as battles with Lorelei and the ones with the three legendary words prove to him that he has still a long way to go to the day where he can battle legendary Pokemon on par in one-on-one -on -one battles and someday defeat the Elite Four to become a regional champion. Ash promises in his head to do his best and achieve his goals. Our heroes then eventually arrive on Trovita Island but on their way they save a little girl from a strong water current who introduces herself to be Mari. As they then arrive on the Trovita Island and are introduced to Rudy who is Mari's older brother and thanks only Misty for rescuing her and starts complimenting Misty like crazy like a simp. He later reveals himself to be the gym leader of the Trovita Island gym as this is when Ash challenges him to which Rudy like the simp he is asks that he will only let Ash battle him if Misty goes out on a date with him and then an exquisite dance which Misty embarrassingly agrees to because she loves compliments. She is getting from Rudy. Before running off with his time with Misty, Rudy states that Ash must at random pick three Pokemon types for his battles against him the next day. Ash picks Electric, Fighting and Normal type and that both of them can only use Pokemon having those types. This is the condition set by Rudy. The next morning, the gym battle starts as Rudy starts off by sending in Electabuzz as Ash sends in Pikachu with both Pokemon clashing Thunderbolts. Quick attacks one after the other. This is when Ash asks Pikachu to land a dig which lands and is super effective as Rudy then calls for a low kick. Ash then asks Pikachu to use the quick attack to bounce off Electabuzz's kick and finish off Electabuzz with an Iron Tail from the top winning Ash the match. The second battle is between Machoke and Primeape as both fighting type dish damage to each other with close combats flying in and out from both ends to determine who the better fighter is. Which is when Ash asks Primeape to use Rage Fist, the new move he had just learnt which is too much to handle for Machoke as he goes down but so does Primeape because the attack just drains him of all his energies. The third round is between Snorlax from Rudy's end and Anito Queen from Ash's end as the two Titan Pokemon clash and exchange blows one after the other. Anito Queen is initially overwhelmed with a few body slams but gets back in the battle with a few superpowers but Ash eventually has Anito Queen take a hyper beam head on and finish off Snorlax with a thunderbolt and a superpower winning Ash the spike shell badge as Misty then has to break Rudy's heart by telling 
protecting him, that she won't be staying back with him, but leaving with Ash and Tracy as the heroes depart towards the next gym, with Rudy telling Ash that he certainly is a great trainer and he should never give up on his dreams. But that's it for this video guys, because we have one gym to go and that will be part 4 and then the finale of the series that will be part 5 and tell me what you have liked about this series up till now tell me what you not liked about this series up till now in the comment section like the video please like the video and if you guys have not subscribed and you're new to the channel apart from that just subscribe pokemon content will keep coming i'm trying to be regular with my content i am trying my best so more pokemon what ifs will be coming i'm thinking about a one piece what if i'm writing side by side i'm also trying to come up with shorts ideas that i will be putting out regularly on the channel so i just need you guys to support me as much as you can by liking these videos and sharing them on whatever platform that you know pokemon thing fans exist on right so till then i've been um till then just keep liking the videos keep sharing the videos keep re-watching the videos if you can and i just wanted to thank you guys for the constant support like share comment subscribe and that's all peace dragon guide see you guys in the next video thank you so much for the support